Hello class, this is part two of the lesson on solving systems of equations, Algebra 2 style. As you may recall, systems like this are triangular and they are easy to solve by back substituting. But what about systems that are not triangular? Systems like this, most of the systems of equations that you deal with in this unit are going to be similar to this. What do you do then? We're going to use the elimination method to create a triangular system because we know how to solve a triangular system. But how do you do that? Uh, you are going to follow this process. You are going to eliminate the variable in row two, column one, first. Next, you're going to eliminate the variable in row three, column one. And last, you're going to eliminate the variable in row three, column two. Once you do that, you have a triangular system which you can use back substitution to solve. Now let's dive into the details of how this works. The first thing we're going to do is eliminate that 2x. We want to eliminate the variable in row 2, column 1 first. So I'm going to multiply row 1, the entire row 1, everything on both sides of the equal sign, by negative 2. Now why negative 2? because later on I'm going to use negative 2x and 2x as a zero pair. So I do that and I get this equation here that has been multiplied by negative 2. Next, I'm going to add row 1 and row 2. These are called row operations. They're perfectly okay in the context of elimination. So now that I have a negative 2x in this position, when I add it to row 2, I eliminate the x. And I'm left with 4y minus 2y, that would be 2y, negative 10z plus negative 3z, that would be minus 13z and negative 50 plus negative 36, that's going to be negative 86. Now, last thing I'm going to do is rewrite my system with my new row two. I have a new row two. And notice that the variable in this position has been eliminated. I did not change y uh, row one. I was just using that as a tool to get rid of this variable. So row one remains the original, row three remains the original. What has changed is row two. Now, the next thing in our process is this. We got rid of this variable. Now we need to get rid of this variable. So we're going to multiply by negative 3. We're going to multiply row 1 by negative 3. Now, why did I pick negative 3? Because I need a negative 3x and a positive 3x for these two to be able to cancel out. That's what a zero pair means. So I'm going to multiply row 1 by negative 3. And when you do this, I would be careful to write it out like this, document every piece of work because it's easy to make an arithmetic mistake in here and you'll never find it if you didn't write it down. So I multiplied every term on both sides of the equation by negative three, and this is what I get. And I'm going to take that result and add it to row three. Once again, I will be able to eliminate this 3x because these, this is a zero pair, it cancels out. So I have negative three plus negative two y, that gives me negative five y. 
I have negative 15 plus Z. That gives me negative 14 Z. And I have negative 75 plus 11. That gives me negative 64. And last but not least, an important step is to rewrite your system with your new row 3. You'll notice that row 1 still hasn't changed, and throughout this process, it's not. It's going to remain the same. However, we will use it as a tool to eliminate variables as needed. Now you can see I have eliminated the variable in this position, and I have eliminated the variable in this position, and I have rewritten my system. So what's next? You may have guessed that what we want to do next is get rid of the variable in this position, row 3, column 2. I want to get rid of this negative 5y. But I have a problem. I can't use row 1, or I'll just put an x again in there. I have to use row 2. But what do I do to create a zero pair since this is a 2? And this is a negative 5. I'm going to multiply row 2 by 5. That creates 10y minus 65z is equal to negative 430. And then I'm going to multiply row 2 by 2. That gives me negative 10y minus 28z is equal to negative 128. So you see, I have created my zero pairs for the variable in this position. I had to multiply two rows to do that, but that's perfectly legal. All right, so I'm going to add those two rows, my two modified rows, 10y minus 65z is equal to negative 430, and 10y minus 28z is equal to negative 128. I'm going to add those two rows together, and 10y minus 10y cancels out. Great. Exactly what we were trying to do. When I add negative 65 to negative 28, I end up with negative 93. And when I add these two, the constants, I end up with negative 558. Now, what's great about that is that now all I have to do is divide by negative 93, and I have my value for z. So here we are, people, and we have our triangular system. We have z is equal to a single value, and we can back substitute to solve for everything else. So let's take a look at that work. We know the value for z is 6. So I'm going to back substitute into the second equation. 2y minus 13z is equal to negative 86 to solve for y. And here is that work here. Now that I know z and y, of course I can go ahead and solve for x. So I'm going to go to the original first equation and substitute in negative 4 for y and 6 for z. I get x plus 26 is equal to 25. I subtract 26 from both sides, and I end up with x is equal to 1. That means that our solution is this uh, ordered triple. That's what this is called, an ordered triple. It is negative 1 negative 4, and 6. This means when x, y, and z have these values, all three of the equations in that original system are true. Now the last thing I want you to do is make a list of any questions that you had about this video in your notes. There is a lot of detail in this video. And this is completely new to you. Come to class prepared to get clarity on what you learned in this video. Peace out. I'll see you in class. Bye.